Good evening to you. This is Anna Galactic bringing you our second promised lecture today. Now that we've closed out the sequence for the bootstrap sequence to get the new universal space and a new mathematics, it's the old mathematics, but it's uh, necessary to say both a true and a false thing at the same time to get the superpositional truth. Our linear algebra is perfect and eternal and will last forever. God loves it. It mesmerizes all of our physicists. Therefore, it's good. Numbers will eventually take over. We don't have to think anymore. There's no more geometry. That's one side of it. That's what modern astrophysics says. All the things that I just said. You can rewind this and listen to what I said again. Let me just say it one more time, really quickly. Numbers are God. Unfortunately, the universe says, yeah, but, and it's that yes, but that has everybody screwed to the gills because nobody ever learned. They would have remembered had they remembered geometry, but that died out a century ago. But when you say something and then you say it's true, it's true. Linear algebra is God. Yes, it is. Linear algebra is God. And now we're waiting for you to finish your sentence. Because then you have to say the other part. Because, of course, it's not God. <laughs> but they say, no, 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 we want to blind ourselves. We're going to look at the universe through one eye and we'll tell the universe what we want it to be, and that's how we'll get the shitstorm that you and I are in. Well, uh, that doesn't work. And <laughs> Dr. Sabine Hassenfelder has pointed that out, but alas, um, she herself does not have the answer. I gave that to you in the last three lectures. So now we're going to go forward with the new geometry the original geometry that is the integral geometry, which, yes, integrates our numbers, so you never have to use irrational numbers again. They don't actually exist, you see. So only rational numbers exist. Are there an infinite number of them? We'll get to that. You could say yes or no, but if you say yes, you're wrong, and if you say no, you're wrong, so all questions from now on are trick questions. You have to force yourself to stop before you say anything and make sure you have both sides. And Albert Einstein taught us to do that. Now, Paul Dirac came after Albert Einstein. And so it was a real big deal, which Paul Dirac explains in a lecture on this facing page here. That is a page from my notes from yesterday when I listened to Paul Dirac himself give the only recorded lecture that Dirac ever had made or let be made. There are interviews with Dirac, and I've seen one of them. <laughs> the man was considered to be either autistic or a crank or some kind of weirdo, There's a reason for that, but he wasn't any of those things. He was a very gentle and genteel, highly cultured, extraordinarily intelligent man. And in fact, it's his genius that made him the way he was. And I know this for a fact now. He made a comment upon Schrodinger. And I, I, I'm going to have a presentation series on what you see over here. You can read through that. So you, you could stop this and then read it if you want. But I have three pages of notes from a one-hour lecture of Paul Dirac. This is a shout-out to M space R, who was the commenter, commentator, the only one, only person who's ever left a comment on my 270 videos. And he... Unfortunately, I overlooked it. I actually noticed that I had a comment, but the stupid ass 
system, which it's not stupid ass, but I wasn't sure how to use it. The YouTube system um, really has a confounding interface to the comments. And so I saw that I had a comment from three months ago. I saw it within a week and then I tried to read it. And I couldn't, I couldn't find it, so I assumed that it was just a mistake. But then, just about a week ago, this same commentator made a comment on another video I released where he pointed out that he had made a comment and I'd never replied. He didn't take it harshly. He was just pointing out to me that he had directed me to a video on Paul Direct. He had made the comment on my video on the Dirac equation, which was purely mathematical. There's that goddamn eyebrow hair again. Well, I'm... Well, <laughs> well, I look like a, a cat, which is not bad, except I'm supposed to look human. Okay, good, there. And I told you earlier I was gonna get a haircut. I did, but it's freezing ice. God damn it. I've got to concentrate for <laughs> um, There. So, I'm warm enough now. But I did get a haircut. And I bought the first... This is the first tie I've ever bought in my life. And, uh, yeah, you know, not bad, huh? Hey, hey, see? Uh, I'm a big deal. <laughs> well, I'm trying to just, you know, not to look like a... You, you, you got to dress the part, you know what I mean? I'm not ashamed, but my head was cold. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm going to have a presentation series. It's probably going to run two lectures, probably starting tomorrow, on Paul Dirac's equation. Because now, uh, after listening to Paul Dirac and to complete my sentence, this commentator, a, a commentator, he left a comment. That's why I say comment. He's the only guy who's ever left a comment on 260-some videos. <laughs> and he reminded me just three days ago that, that I hadn't responded to him and he just said, you know, hey, I'd like to, you know, talk about something. And I'm like, shit, what, what's wrong with me? I, I have someone who actually responded. It's like, I never expected to get a response ever. I thought I was going to go to my grave. This would just be the last thing I did. Then I appear before God and and at least I was trying, you know, that's all I can do as far as I can tell. And there's a goddamn button. At that time I went to the right, the correct eyebrow again, which in fact is my right eyebrow. I was going to say right is correct, but there's a pun in there. I'm going to clip that later so that doesn't come back. I asked the barber, should I like, you know, do men put, you know, coloring on their mustache? And he said, eh, you know, and I said, oh, eh, 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 no, I don't want it. He, he was like, yeah, well, you know, you could, but <laughs> I'm 68. <laughs> but I'm not vain. Well, obviously not. If I were vain, I wouldn't have Copenhagen under my lip, would I? No, I'm not vain. I'm pretty much the opposite of vain. Depends on what you mean by vain, though. <laughs> Well, one thing I'm not is with a vein sticking out of my forehead, because now I have two references to get a world of, a world of stress off my shoulders. Because, you know, if you've seen anything from my lectures in the past, how I respond, all my life I've responded to natural selection just like a mad dog. I, I, like a pit bull. I tear it to shreds. Get rid of it. It's blasphemous. It's horrible. It's horrifying science. It ruins the lives of children. It, it's the most miserable deception that's ever been launched on the earth. But now all I have to do is say, you're going to read Tom Wolfe's book, Kingdom of Speech. <laughs> you, you would really have to be retarded if after you read that book you were like, well, I still think, I, I, I still think it's true. <laughs> Tom Wolfe will take care of that. And if you're not sure, wh why is he ranting so hard against physics? <clears throat> it's because Dr. Sabine Hussenfelder does, and I've seen what Dr. Sabine has seen, the only difference between Dr. Sabine Hassenfelder and myself is I have the answer. She doesn't. She has something I don't have, which I'm highly envious of. She has a platform. She's an accredited astrophysicist who's turned her attention from theory 
to actual research. Well, that's the most you can do in the industry. She's a heroine. She's a hero. She's a permanent member of A&E. Along with Albert Einstein, there's not too many people who are part of A&E right now. We do have a lab cat, though, and she is maintaining a discreet distance because she's not too sure what I look like now because <clears throat> you just have to look at yesterday's lecture to see that <laughs> my hair had grown uh, like a bush, okay? <laughs> and I wear all kinds of funny shirts. I don't wear a tie. I feel good, you know. I'm of the age now, in, in, on my scale of time, I'm a latecomer in everything, okay? I even achieved puberty maybe a month, uh, six months or a year later than the average. And ever since then, I'm just a slow study. Mathematics, I didn't really pick up on that until my late 50s. Just finally got calculus only like three or four years ago. And quantum mechanics, I didn't study until four years ago. I didn't study ast astronomy until beginning 15 years ago about. And so, you know, I'm a real latecomer, but I haven't worked in 14 years. It's given me a lot of time to concentrate. I've concentrated on the sphere. But this guy over here, these are the notes I took on Paul Dirac. And just to show you the note, I just took these notes yesterday and this is not from the video that MR the commentator recommended I have links to that though in the description and the link to the to the Paul Dirac theory that you see over here it's right over here as you can see huh. uh, uh, uh. it's over here <laughs> I'm looking at a blank wall when I do this and the actual document is over there <laughs> for me, but not for you. So I have to snap out of this. I have to use what's called a reflection in geometry. <laughs> it is. It's a reflection. Which, just to give you something to think about, of the three main relationships in geometry, they're reflection, rotation, and translation. But all three of them can be reduced to reflections and a rotation is two reflections and geometric algebra only needs reflection to do this most amazing geometric stunts you've ever seen it's being used in robotics at the highest level and this is a good thing to mention right now to show how brain dead physics is right now because for 50 years we've had geometric algebra and the physics community is so brain dead, they don't have any feedback system to correct anything or to bring anything new in. They're exactly in the position that Dr. Sabine Hassenfelder says that they're in. Astrophysics, physics, and quantum mechanics are mesmerized. They're drugged. And now they're dangerous. Not as dangerous as natural selection, but I refer you to Tom Wolfe's book. <laughs> Tom Wolfe's book. <laughs> and if, if you're not sure, oh, I think physics is doing great because I'm so dazzled by the technology, obviously it's doing well. Uh, you better correct yourself real fast. It's doing really well on Earth, including GPS, the only application of Albert Einstein's space-time formulation is GPS and it works because of four tensor calculus which means we got to throw it out we we don't actually throw it out though all the solutions that have been achieved in physics and quantum mechanics and even astrophysics all the way to the Big Bang and the supermassive black hole they're all based on valid knowledge but with uh, just the most ironic ironically debilitating twist that the numbers that these men are absolutely in love with because of what Dr. Sabine says. They find beauty in numbers. There is beauty in numbers, obviously. They make jets. They make tanks. I mean, there is a good and a bad side, but that's not the fault of the mathematics. The, the linear number system is miraculous on Earth. 
It just doesn't work in cosmic space. Why not? It's spherical. Now, I've covered this whole fish ladder sequence of paradoxes several times over the past seven months. And within the last month, obviously summing it all up and going through the bootstrap sequence, which I did not discover until August. And if you need a timeline on that, I'll have, I'll have more PDFs and visual information, stuff that you can read at my site. Grab a pen or make a place in your mind to write that this down, the, the link to my site, the URL to my site that has clickable links to all of my videos. It's called anagalactic.space. Anagalactic is not a word that's in use, but it is in the dictionary. It's just not used, but it is a word. It's the word galactic, which you know there's several Greek prefixes you can put in front of Greek words in English, like extragalactic, which is the contra of intragalactic, which means inside our galaxy, that's intragalactic. Anything outside of our galaxy is extragalactic. Well, what about anagalactic? <laughs> this is a word that was tried by a man named... I believe his first name was Knut. He was Swedish, if I'm recalling correctly. Knut Lundmark. And he tried the word in the late 1920s, anagalactic, didn't catch on. That only one other person even tried to use it. It was only in reference to Lundmark's work. And then it died out. Well, it's a word, and I wanted it. It does have a meaning, and I'll cover that later. So where we're at now, and the reason I'm wearing this tie, and a nice shirt, and a, a suit, and I got a haircut, and I even brushed my teeth, but I won't show you them now because they're covered with Copenhagen snuff. <laughs> Not because I'm in the Boer camp. I don't, I don't uh, accredit the Copenhagen interpretation of quantum mechanics. But to get right to the point here to jump into this so we don't waste too much time, which I'm famous for doing, you've seen these notes over here. Look at that. I am trainable. I, I forced myself to see the mirror reflection, and I looked right at it, and now I'm looking at a blank wall, pretending I'm looking right at the document I want you to notice. And, <laughs> and here we're going to just zoom up here, and here's more notes, and here's the Q&A session that began at the end of the one-hour lecture. More notes, more notes, and here's the end. We'll find it on the ring. That's what we're getting to. So I'm going to leave this on the second page for now so you can look at it while I talk. I think that should be good there. That's good. And I'll, I'll scroll up a little more so if you don't want to hear me drone on, by the way, eventually I'll be talking more like this, as if I perhaps had studied at Cambridge or Oxford for a while, and I am trying to sound as Edward Powell Hubble tried to sound. Did I say Edward? <laughs> Uh, whatever his first name is, Hubble. <laughs> uh, Major Edwin, Edwin the Major Powell Hubble. <laughs> he, he really should have stayed in England. They loved him. They fucking loved him. Well, Einstein came to visit him in Hollywood, and they both met Charlie Chaplin. The man was an absolute frickin' hero. That is, Hubble was. Absolute hero on the continent, in England, and in America. For very good reason. But Einstein paid homage to him. He came and visited him, and they both got to see Charlie Chaplin, and all of Hollywood turned out. He was fated. Uh, and, I mean, the man was just a legend. He got married in Carmel, California, my favorite place on Earth. Uh, approximately geographically, is Monterey, Point Lobos area, near Big Sur. Oh, and right, right, around the, right around the bay from Santa Cruz, where I lived for 14 years. Why am I in Chico? Has to do with the will of heaven, my friend. I don't object in the slightest degree. 
But where I'm at now is with this new geometry is I'm going to try to start talking with a, a tone that'll probably increase my life by several months if I don't, you know, talk like this all the time. I'm just so excited. I'm like a cartoon character. No, you don't want to be like that. And by the way, what this guy, MR, which could stand for Mr. with a space in it, or it could be mental retard is what we said MR as in the third grade, which is about the latest you should use any term like that. But whatever he means by MR is beyond me. It's just a handle. Who cares? You can call yourself the Zinx, Onyx, you know, Phoenix, Flightedite, and nobody gives a hoot. <clears throat> <laughs> My handle is A-E-I-O-U, which stands for something, and we'll get to that eventually, but it's not germane right now. No, what's on this page over here that you can see is the notes that I took from Paul Dirac's recorded lecture. Holy smokes. The sound quality is abysmal. Every now and then it flickers. It's totally black and white. Nobody is really sure who took this or... But we know when, he, when it was taken and why Paul Dirac was speaking. The lecture is a gem, but so is the lecture that MR, <laughs> sorry to laugh, I'm still kind of in third grade sometimes, <laughs> that MR <laughs> recommended to me. I watched it, and frick was he right. And one of the reasons I suspect I was directed to this, either unconsciously or consciously, is is. I believe his name is Dennis Morris, but I'll have I'll have links on that at my site and in the comments from now on. He gives a lecture on Paul Dirac's equation, which is almost nothing of what Paul Dirac says over here. Yeah, shit. <laughs> but the two lectures, that is the two videos, I should say, just blend. So it's miraculous from seeing Paul Dirac's lecture. And now here's a good time to, uh, let's scroll down so you can see some more. Here's the Q&A period. We'll leave that the way it is. I think you can see that. Yeah, we'll have some more in just a, a, a minute. But the Dirac equation is, of course, you have to now say two things, as I've taught you, and I'm practicing to make sure I always do this. Uh, the Dirac equation is the height of absurdity and the epitome of genius. And it's both at the same time according to the laws of mechanical logic and quantum space. We call it quantum mechanics. It's not really mechanics. But actually, both Morris and Dirac explain why it's considered to be mechanics and the reason why it cannot be considered mechanics and the shitstorm that that's raised, which, ra which actually raises a question about reality, which is in all the news because everyone's bored to death with quantum mechanics and astrophysics because no one can understand the calculus and nobody's explaining what it means. I wonder why not. It's because they don't know what it means. And, and Einstein said... Uh, that's incorrect, people, but alas for Albert, uh, Stockholm, very close to Copenhagen, <laughs> decided to give the Nobel Prize, and it's in all the news, you can check, the Nobel Prize in Physics in 2022 was given to bury Albert Einstein once and for all, so his goddamn kvetching would not influence these poor, rich, astrophysicists and quantum mechanists who are so mesmerized with their numbers and the beauty of the standard model of particle physics, they just have orgasms <clears throat> in their fantasy world. It's a fantasy world of numbers. And that's only saying one part of it. It's not pure fantasy. So what's the linchpin? What's the keystone that holds the thing, whole thing together that we can't see? It's what I discovered, the correct geometry. It's in spherical space, and there's never been a spherical geometry. 
There's been spherical trigonometry, but never a spherical geometry. Why not? I've gone through the fish ladder paradox sequence, the showing you why nobody could see this, because it's impossible to do this fish ladder sequence, but heaven blessed me with the perseverance and the amount of time that I would need to do this, and not having been infected with calculusitis. I'm not in love with numbers, but I certainly know their power. And you're going to, perhaps for the first time in your life, if you hate mathematics, it's because heaven has been protecting you against these bastards who've traduced the logic of numbers because they've forgotten geometry. Well, I've been gifted with a certain ability to see things. And geometry is all about seeing things. I'm going to teach you to see the universe. The way Albert Einstein actually broke the door open, but he did it in a language that cannot be understood using a geometry, and there does have to be a geometry or it wouldn't work at all. Your GPS would not work unless there were a valid geometry underlying it. But hyperbolic geometry for 4D space is the most incredible magic act that's ever, and that can be proved. I have proved it. You can listen to my previous 250 lectures, but I'll sum it up for you now. You're allowed to extend 1D space to do 2D space with an imaginary axis. That was done to create the complex plane. That's perfect for analysis and it's considered to be a miracle. It is, and it's also a curse. And the same thing was done for 3D space. You can extend that to 4D space with an imaginary number. And that's what Albert Einstein did to linearize time in linear space. And that works, but it forces a negation on the time axis, which makes hyperbolic space. That, children, is inside-out space. It's exactly what a child cannot see unless you turn the child inside out. And that's what you do to them when you put them through school to learn calculus to get to the cutting edge of science. You doom them to a labyrinth of fractalized insanity. Okay? These are facts that have been proved by me. So, that's the bad news. There's always bad news somehow because it's a bad situation. But the good news is you can fix it. You can start over with my geometry. I'll call it that until it's accepted by science. And then it will not have my name attached. And you can steal this. You can just pretend. I, I won't object. You can say, you know, I just discovered all these things and just quote everything I say. Put your name on it. If you're younger, that'll be just because I won't live long enough to get my Nobel Prize. And also, I'm not like Sabine. I'm not in the industry. I don't have anybody's ear. You see, the scientific system has been invalidated. And there is nothing left to validate a new discovery on the order of what I've discovered. First of all, I have no degrees. That means the big godfather doesn't even know who I am. I haven't paid my dues. I haven't worked hard enough. I haven't worked my ass off. I haven't sold my soul to the uh, university system. So I cannot be heard. You think that frustrates me? I'd be lying if I said just one thing either way. It's superpositional because all human beings are superpositional. So is the universe, so that's a good match. I'm going to teach you how to use superpositional state logic so you can learn how to think the way the universe does. I should say the way the universe wants you to think. You have a 2-1 harmonic built into you, and the universe does too. And the 2-1 harmonic is what we're going to be getting into, but I want to keep this lecture brief. We're approaching a half an hour. I wanted you to see my new look, and soon, with just a modicum of practice, you're going to hear me talking s more slowly, more deeply, with my native, finely post-puberty -pu voice, with a nice low, even tone, such as D. Morris uses. <laughs> and um, I'll talk more slowly and more Cambridge-like, like Paul Dirac does, and like the great Sir Roger Penrose does, because everyone from England sounds normal. 
and palatable and not hyperactive or out of their fucking mind like I usually sound. Because I've been under a lot of stress. Let's not just, you know, crush me into the ground as some hideous toad. I'm trying my best. But I'm human, obviously. Quite human, my friend. <laughs> In fact, um, I found... And this is biblical, if you wish to go that far. It's okay to drink wine, or barley wine. <laughs> this, is, this is from the Netherlands, although for a long time I thought it was from Czechoslovakia, because it says Pilsner on it. But this is not Pilsner Urquell. This is a Pilsner type beer, beer from a place called um, Grolsch. <laughs> It's in the Netherlands, that's an interesting history. Very old beer, very good flavor. Keeps me calmer. I'm sure I'll live longer if I don't drink four of these tonight. Which, <laughs> never, never mind, pardon. <laughs> I eat brown rice, I eat salads, I, I'm keeping healthy. I had diabetes and I had asthma right at the time of the campfire that destroyed my home and life's work four years ago. But they were both miraculously cured because in the summer of 2019, after the campfire, when I was finally settled in Chico with a room not very big, I got a bicycle with the last few dollars that I had. <clears throat> and I rode every day all summer through 100 degree weather, every day, all day, all summer. And then I was tested for diabetes levels in December and the doctor w almost passed out. And so did my brother-in-law, because um, I'm cured of it. I don't have diabetes anymore, and I don't have asthma anymore. I almost died after the fire from smoke poisoning. I almost coughed myself to death over the winter of 2018 to 2019. But I instantly took up quantum mechanics to get myself back concentrating on reality instead of just adhering to my first wish after my wife died 14 years ago, was to let my money run out and die in the bushes. Actually, I was going to die. My plan was to go to the Greyhound bus station in um, at the corner of 7th and Mission in San Francisco because it's within distance of the Golden Gate Bridge if I decided to finish it quickly. But I also decided I can't commit suicide and I can't stand heights. I'd never be able to throw myself off the bridge. But I could die in a carbon monoxide cloud with the other hobos who were living on their cardboard island, I would give them silver dollars. When I was 15 and 16, I had a silver dollar collection, but I pitied these hobos because I walked by them every Sunday going to the Japanese part of town to play Go, the national game of Japan, which now only the machines can win at, <laughs> just as in chess. So we are teaching our machines to think for us, so that nobody will have to think at all anymore. We've already given up on geometry, given up on the way of science. That's why you have the Big Bang cosmological expansion. Bullshit, bullshit, bullshit. Not learning anything, not getting anything for humanity, not doing real science, not pleasing God, definitely pleasing Satan. Satan totally supports linear algebra. He's getting his bombs, he's getting his space platform, he's getting ready to end the Earth, actually to prolong it for as long as he can in its agony, so he gets all the joy he can from his governmental seats. If you don't like religion, you explain it. Okay? As for the fate of the Earth, UFOs are flying around now, and the United States government has seen them, so that's the end. What's going on in Ukraine has no meaning. There's always been something going on in Ukraine or <laughs> somewhere nearby. And it's a rush for the last drops of oil that can be easily pumped out of the earth to maintain the billions of barrels a day that are just gulped down by New York and everything that radiates out from it. Where the capital of the world is, and you're being set off to Vietnam, to Afghanistan, to Iraq, Pretty soon you'll be sent to, not Ukraine, I predict that, but you will be sent to Iran to destroy that nation and take its oil. That's what's coming up next. If you like what's going on on Earth, that's what's going to happen. I'm not a prophet. I don't have to be to know that. Anybody can see that.
But as for science, the way of heaven, it's not been stamped out. It can't be stamped out. It'll be ground down to an infinitesimal, but it'll still be there and I'll still be here. And somebody's going to pick this up and run with it. It could be you. I don't want money, but I do want you. I want you to learn this. So from now until the solstice, I'm going to be teaching you about the geometry of the sphere, which is the first geometry ever discovered. There's never been any other geometry. We've had a fake geometry made of sticks, and Albert Einstein was forced to use it like using Legos to construct the spheres of the universe. Oh, boy. Well, that's how we got hyperbolic space and four-tenths of calculus. You like that? <laughs> Not, you don't have to. You don't have to. All you have to do is grow up. That's not actually easy to do. I make it like it's off the cuff, just grow up. Oh, well, sure, how? When everything conspires against you to not grow up. What do I mean by grow up? Well, you know, you're supposed to balance yourself emotionally so you don't hate inordinately, you don't steal, you don't break the commandments, you don't hurt anybody, you just try to get by in life, which means you'll be crushed by everything around you because nobody else is going to obey those rules, but you should if you're trying to get to heaven. Well, we're trying to get to heaven right now using the other blueprint that's not emotional. It's called rational logic. And you can now prove, if you haven't already realized it right now listening to me, or somewhere in the past, I'm just reinforcing, the creator is rational. That's tautological. Of course he is. And we already know that there's a creator. That's been proved by science. Who's going to tell you that? Who's going to tell you that you're not from monkey meat? There is no such thing as evolution. And who's going to tell you where the solar system came from, huh? Nobody. Well, I will. Only a full-grown man can do that. And that means I'm going to have to talk down to you. And you're going to have to, like, look up to me. You don't. That's ridiculous. That's idolatry. I don't claim that I got this except as a gift. I'm passing it on to you. I don't want my name attached to it. I don't want money from it. That would invalidate my original goal to get to heaven as a harmless human being. Just pass through earth trying to wait to get to heaven. That's what I'm still doing. But I also have a rational mind and I know what it's for. You don't. When I say you, I'm looking over your shoulder at the physicists. They don't know what they're doing, literally. That's a quite an indictment. Uh, they're not going to like that. Well, nobody cares, and they shouldn't care either, because they're supposed to be scientists. But it's the godfather who's not going to like it. He doesn't like his high-paid slaves being interrupted in any way. Now, the bitter irony of that for someone like me is, is that I am not a threat in any way. It's not going to interfere with the money pipeline. In fact, it would make the Godfather even richer if he plays his cards right. But he's not going to lose anything from me having dissolved his favorite number system. Because I've replaced it with a better number system. It integrates the number system that the Godfather gets all his money from from the poor, thoughtless, stupid slaves like Neil deGrasse Tyson, Brian Greene, and all the rest. I'm no threat, but we're not talking about good anymore. We're talking about evil, <laughs> and evil is irrational. That's why there's billions of deaths, and millions and millions of innocent people have been butchered in the most pointless, irrational fashion, and it should have been over by now. It'll never be over because of evil. If you don't like that, you come up with a better solution. Oh, uh, I'll tell you who has the best shot in town is Elon Musk. <laughs> uh, your, your, your children will be uh, procreating on Mars if Elon gets his way. Here's my prediction for that, and you can take this to the bank. I will not be disproved on this, but I also won't be able to collect so I'm taking a big chance by saying this. When and if Elon Musk or his successors succeed in landing a human being on Mars, the nearest planet that we can land on would be Mars in order to 
jump start to the stars. Elon wants to get us to the stars. I don't know what you think about that. You'd have to be out of your fucking mind to even th do anything except laugh your ass off at that. But to get to another planet? That seems reasonable, doesn't it? <laughs> it's not. The first man who ever lands on Mars will never come back. He'll die there. And then, then the program will stop. Or if it doesn't, anyone else who goes there will die there too. No one who ever goes to Mars or any other planet will ever come back to Earth. That's what I say. And I'm a scientist too. <laughs> Alright, so that's... Oh look, 40 minutes, perfect. So you got to see me in my new look. Pretty soon I won't be raising my voice as I just did again because I'm uncoordinated and undisciplined. But I need to relax as well as concentrate. And I've given my all. I gave it all for the book and I did my part. My discoveries were rejected and then nature came along and mercifully just burned it all up so I don't even have to think about it anymore because it's gone except for what's in my head. But then I just started over because... My wife was taken back up to where she's from. I don't complain about that, but it almost killed me. Heaven knew that was going to happen, and heaven controlled the situation, got me to Chico through a fire and some other shit, diseases and other threats, which I could go into, but you don't want to hear about that unless you want to read my autobiography, which I'm not going to write, because I'm not important. But my message is, because it's not mine, it's the geometry of the universe and the new number system that releases the bind that physics is in. Nothing less than that, that's what I'm going to prove. I already have, if you want to listen to the past 250 lectures, you would get a, a, a glimpse into a part of science that is very rarely revealed. The actual execution of a discovery sequence in process. I've documented that in 250 lectures. That had been my goal, because I knew it was going to be a discovery vector, and holy shit, I was way more right than I ever thought. I never thought that I would get this far. I didn't think I would get this far back in January of last year when this began. But now I've got it. And the first lecture that you see after this is going to be on the Dirac equation. After that, we're going to go into Roger Bos Boschkovich. Still hard for an American to say Bosch because it's not spelled B-O-S-H or B-O-S-C-H. It's just B-O-S-C. And when we look at that, it looks like it says Bosco. Well, it's not. It's Boschkovich. And we're going to have a series of lectures on Boschkovich's absolutely incredible insights that predate quantum mechanics by well over a century. And a lot of Boschkovich's discoveries validate mine. And it's not the other way around. I don't validate anybody else. I'm on my own leading the pack. I'm now the greatest. I, the only reason I'm saying this is to say it over your shoulders. So forgive me, but I do need the consensual participation of science, whatever's left of it. So I'm going to say this so that someone with nuts can hear it and respond. I am the greatest astrophysicist on the face of the Earth right now and the leading quantum mechanist, except I've renamed it. It's quantum harmonics. I'm going to teach that to you from now until the solstice at least. And we're going to resolve. The, the word that's used in computing is refactor. We're going to take apart the Dirac equation and put it back together again in spherical space with the exact same logic that works. Insofar as these equations work, and they do work to a degree, and then they hit a brick wall when they get to anything that has to do with the sphere. Well, uh, you have to have a way to deal with the sphere now. Huh, I do. You don't believe it? Listen to the last three lectures. That's 44 minutes. I hope you're having fun. If you're not, that's okay, because you're still doing the right thing. But I'm having a blast. I have never been happier. I think I'm the happiest man on earth. When you live alone, you use a lot of exaggeration and superlatives that maybe you shouldn't as a scientist. I don't give a fuck. <laughs>
okay? I will be who I am all the way. Roger Boschkovich was. He talked about God and metaphysics right away. So did everyone that came before him. But beginning about the Industrial Revolution, metaphysics was no longer needed. Why not? Because geometry was not needed. Because numbers had replaced thinking. Not really, though, huh? You still had to think about the numbers. But if you're thinking about the numbers, but you're not making geometrical sense, which Albert Einstein failed at that, except he didn't, it's superpositional, we're going to cover all that. And I'm also going to get into superpositional state logic. I'm the foremost expert on that. I learned quantum computing from Scott Aronson, the foremost expert on qubit computations on the face of the earth today. He might disagree with that. It's just my subjective opinion, but I got what I needed by studying with Scott and a few other men, the Bloch sphere, the half-spin spherical surface, which defines the electron. That's what Paul Dirac was talking about, the electron. That's the particle of time. Stay tuned to Anagalactic and check anagalactic.space. I will soon have a top-level link to an entire system of PDFs and monographs that I will give you with all the links to books, videos, and every single thing you need to understand this new geometry which is going to replace everything in modern physics. It's also, just for your information, destined to relieve the agony of the university system for calculus, which has robbed certainly the American people of billions of dollars to get their children the only last chance they have to make a decent living in this world for the Godfather is by learning the incredibly unjust punishment of calculus. Twelve years is the minimum to get to the top and it's useless to learn that shit. It's all a dead end. But if you listen to me, it'll all make sense. You'll be able to take it with you beyond anything you can imagine. This is the culmination of the prediction made in the wisdom book called the Book of Proverbs, believe it or not, first eight chapters, Bin Bina Tibuna Hakma. You yourself will be responsible for the Hakma. I'm responsible for getting you understanding which you cannot otherwise get except from me. Okay? I don't ask for money, but I do want you to get me in touch with Sabine Hassenfelder if you have any way of doing so. Just I'll reward you. And I'm a man of the book. If I say I'll reward you, I'll fucking reward you. But um, you're never going to give me money. I'm here to give you gold and rubies. Stay tuned. We'll be back. Not tonight. I'm exhausted. This has been a whirlwind year. I'm happy. I'm content. And I'm calming down. I'll force myself to calm down so that I can act the way I look, okay? I'm very young at heart, but let's face it, 68, getting pretty close to the end for me. I don't mind. I don't want your pity <laughs> or your forgiveness because they're useless. But um, I do want your help. I'm your friend, sight unseen, if you give me equal time with them, okay? I'm going to show you what Boschkovich discovered, what Einstein discovered, what Dirac discovered, what Max Planck discovered, and we're going to get back to James Clerk Maxwell, which the British pronounce Clark. Stay tuned. This is Anagalactic. We'll be right back.